Hi, my name is Thorsten Noreen with the Data Solution Engineering team. In this video, I'll set up and discuss the two VPN options available for partners when failing over into the Dado Cloud. VPNs are an important step to virtualizing systems in the Dado Cloud, as without it, end users are unable to interact with the failover workloads. A cloud virtualization doesn't need to be done ahead of time to set up a VPN. These two steps can be done separately and networks can be set up ahead of time if you prefer. Let's begin by looking at the client VPN option. This is useful for scenarios where there are a small number of users working remotely or in the office. In the data portal, I'll begin by identifying the appliance, accessing the hamburger menu on the left, and clicking on the recovery launchpad. Once in the recovery launchpad, I'll click on Manage Networks from the Virtualization section. I'll proceed to create a new network for our DR by adding a new network. The model that appears requires some basic information to define a network. I'll name this network dr-net. I'll give it an address space of 192.168.6.0 and CIDR of 24. You'll notice the subnet mask and gateway was automatically filled out. You'll also notice I have the option to define a DHCP pool as well as site-to-site -site VPN connection. I'll leave both of these checkbox blank. DHCP might be useful if I were introducing a number of desktop to this environment. It is always best practice to assign servers static IP addresses. I'll configure the site-to-site -site in the second half of this video. Clicking on Create Network finalize the network creation process. To test this network, I'll go back to restore and virtualize the server. If you're unsure how to virtualize the server in the recovery launchpad, I'll recommend checking out the video in this series. Now, I already have a file server virtualized. I'll access the console by clicking on the VNC icon. Once logged into the server, I'll need to access the network adapter and assign a static IP address, gateway, and DNS entry. From the system tray, I'll open Network and Sharing Center, change Adapter Settings, and access properties of the network adapter. From here, I'm interested in viewing the v4 address configuration. In the IP address model, I'll input the static IP address of this server. I'll use 192.168.6.2. The gateway will be 192.168.6.1 and the DNS will also be 192.168.6.1. I'll commit the change by pressing on the OK button and closing out the remaining dialogues. To test if this network is working, I'll attempt to reach Google DNS by opening a command shell and pinging quad 8. And there we have it. The network is created and I'm able to verify the connection from a VM. Now to establish client VPN, we must return to the recovery launchpad and click on Manage Network, where I'll add a new VPN user. Clicking on the name of the network will expand additional options. In the Client VPN option, click the Add Client VPN button. In the model, I'll add a name for our user. Let's name our user Alice and click on Add. It takes only a few seconds for the Client VPN to be generated. Data utilize OpenVPN for connectivity and several credential options are available. If an end user is using Windows, you'll want to email the OpenVPN profile or the PowerShell client script for Windows. Both of these require OpenVPN 2.5 running on the operating system. The Mac shell scripts insert the profile into TunnelBrick. And lastly, there is also a shell script option for Linux, which utilizes OpenVPN as well. It is important to note the user client VPN profile is only valid for eight hours from creation. In this example, I'll use the OpenVPN script. By clicking on the OpenVPN text, downloads the script. From the systems tray, 
I'll locate the OpenVPN client and import the downloaded script. Once downloaded, navigate back to the system tray icon, locate the profile, and connect. The tunnel may take up to 30 seconds or more to establish, but once it does, you'll notice the icon will change to green. To test the tunnel, open a Windows command prompt and ping the cloud VM. In my case, I'll ping 192.168.6.2. All right, that's it. We have created a VPN client and verify it works. We'll now look at creating an IPsec site-to-site -site VPN. IPsec is widely used for securing network traffic as it ensures integrity, confidentiality, and authentication, also known as the CIA triad for data communication over IP networks. A few seconds ago, we created Alice, our client VPN user. That's fairly easy if we had a few users, but what if we had an organization with 200 plus users required to connect to the DR environment? Client VPN in that case would not make sense. This is where IPsec is useful as it bridges two or more networks at the router level. And users access the systems in a DR is business as usual, as a separate network client is now required on a desktop or laptop to access the systems in the Dado cloud. So let's head over to the recovery launchpad and set up a site-to-site -site tunnel. Select Manage Networks, and either create or edit the network you wish to use. In my case, I'll edit the DRNet network and add a new site-to-site -site VPN configuration. This model has a lot of fields, but only a few is important for our scenario. For almost all IPsec configuration with the data portal, Ike version 2 is preferred. Ike 2 added EAP authentication it supports NAT traversal, as well as dead peer detection. It consumes less bandwidth and support for mobile Ike. If you select Ike2 in a portal, you must select the same in an on-premise router. For the pre-shared key, I'll recommend you use a pre-shared key generator. I use one from Google, but you can use any others. You'll want to keep this key as it's required for both the on-premise router as well as the cloud. For the local IC ID and on-premise IP, you'll want to use the default public IP address of the on-premise router. In my case, it's 10.120.140.52. The on-premise subnet will be 192.168.20.0 with a 24 subnet mask. For phase one and phase two configurations, I'll leave the default as it corresponds to the on-premises router. The main purpose of phase one is to set up a secure encrypted channel through which the two peers can negotiate phase two. The purpose of phase two negotiation is for the two peers to agree on a set of parameters that defines what traffic can go through the VPN and how to encrypt and authenticate the traffic. All right, we are done with the data portal portion in setting up the site-to-site -site tunnel. I'll now proceed to configure the on-site router and initiate the tunnel. I'm using a Dado DNA for this portion, but you can easily use any vendor router that supports site-to-site -site IPsec, such as Cisco, Juniper, D-Link, and so forth. In the Dado DNA, I'll navigate to networking, then scroll down and click on new site-to-site -site VPN topology. I'll begin by giving it a name, Dado DRNet. I'll limit the access to only VLAN 120, and I'll add a new remote site that's a non-DNA. I'll set up the direction as outbound and specify the public interface address from the DRNet network in the recovery launchpad. With the IP address entered, we're now ready to enter the pre-shared key that is the same one from earlier. For the local IPsec ID, I'll use the IP address from the router. The one interface is 10.120.140.52. The remote IPsec ID, I'll utilize the public IP address from the remote network. 
The remote subnet will be the subnet uh, CIDR notation from the partner portal DRNet. In my case, I set that to 192.168.6.0 with a subnet mask of 24. I'll leave the Ike version as version 2 and verify the phase 1 and phase 2 information are the same here to that of the network in the recovery launchpad. Click on Save Changes enables the site-to-site -site tunnel. We can now proceed to verify traffic can be sent from the recovery launchpad to the on-premises subnet. To do this, I'll open a command shell in the remote VM and send a ping request to the on-premises subnet gateway. All right, that was successful. Let's do it in reverse. I'll log into a system on the local network and attempt to ping the remote server we started earlier. Again, through a command shell, I'll ping 192.168.6.2 to reach a file server in the cloud. And this was successful as well. So in review, Datto provides two methods to connect to offsite workloads in the recovery launchpad for DR purposes, client VPN and site-to-site -site VPN. While site-to-site -site VPN is a bit more complex to set up, it is simpler to manage as a separate software client is not needed to be installed on end user machines. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching.